for our Head of State keynote address. And our next speaker currently serves as the President of Armenia. He's also a noted physicist, scientist, and author, having recently written a book about global risks of quantum behavior. It's a great privilege to have with us here today and to welcome on stage the President of Armenia, His Excellency Dr. Armen Sarkisian.
So I think we have to be very careful of what to do with that because maybe it doesn't have effect on the climate, but it is a contamination of the nature and a serious one for a long, very long period of time. So, from the gray to the bright future in green, there is a lot of hard work. And of course, the big part of that should be the renewable. But we have to be very, very careful because if we are using, for example, hydro and building that to, 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 to create the outflow of the water, we have to be very careful to not to damage the nature. When you are using, when we are using wind, I think have, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this seas of uh, wind, wind farms. At the end of the day, somehow we are directly and indirectly harming the nature as well, because the biological life, the natural life under these winds, doesn't have the right environment to, to exist and to develop. When we are thinking about using more and more sun, and the sun energy is the best energy that we can, is the only source of real energy on this planet, and the biggest one, and basically we have 2,000 times more energy coming to this planet than we are using per day the whole planet together. So it's huge energy, but we, again we have to be careful of using that in a form that we don't damage the nature. Because even the solar, solar panels which are created from specific materials, should be not damaging the nature. But I think it's enough about the problems. Let me speak about the advantages and where we are today. I will focus on two issues. Make probably some small comment about Armenia, because probably you will think what, what I do think about Armenia. And of course I will address some, some small advice to, you, to the younger generation. Uh, first of all, uh, two points that I want to make. Point number one about globalization, because that's very important in our lives. I think for several, a couple of decades we were speaking and speaking about globalization. To make it simple as a model, what is today's globalization? It probably started the whole the impact of globalization after the fall of the Berlin Wall. But the walls between East and West, the walls between ideologies was destroyed. The second impact was when the world recognize there is one important path to the future and that's the capitalistic way of managing. So it is the way of free and liberal market and development. That has created international institutions very actively like the World Trade Organization, uh, intergovernmental relations and at the end of the day what happens there is a huge flow of jobs, energy and money from one, from the west to the east and the production that will be starting some instead of United States, in China, or in Vietnam, or India, and the, uh, the world started becoming global market and global production site. But most important is the third one, the third important one is, is that years ago, different parts of the world were connected by, uh, with each other with, uh, with uh, connectivity lines, telephone lines. But with the time, uh, fiber optics started, started coming and then eventually if you look at the world today it's a small globe with a huge network of nerves which is the fiber optic which is the fiber optic on ground and also submarine that is connecting the whole world together so that gave a boost to the global connectivity so this globe is an interconnected so it looks very natural today to make a telephone from, from here to, to, to California or to, to Australia and to real time face or discuss and it looks very natural but it was not there 20, 30 years ago. And the issue there was the globalization, the technical globalization. Now people speak about that the globalization is stopping because there are new barrier, uh, barriers between uh, different states. I, will, I would like to make a statement here that uh, globalization will not stop, and it's not stopping. For a simple reason, yes, the globalization started as a macro process on the highest level in the intergovernment relations, agreements, tariffs, and so on and so forth. But it has gone so far like a nuclear fusion process. It has started, and there's no way that we can start it because it has gone to the micro level of it. So I would call it that this is a globalization on the level of quantum. 
So even if we put some barriers here, there is no way that we can stop the flow of ideas. We can now stop the flow of startups, which are the new engine of the new industry in the world. And there is no way that businessmen or young generation from China, from India, from United States, Europe, Russia, Middle East will not continue communicating and developing further the globalization. So maybe on the, on the macro level, you can start creating some barriers. Maybe you can slow down or put a barrier on trade on steel or cars or other services. But generally, the new tendency, the new industry, the IT industry, the AI industry, all the new technology industries will never stop. It's a chain reaction. So there is a global, quantum, globalization, unstoppable. So the globalization is on. And that's the future of the next generation. That's why I wanted to make this point clear. The second point that I want to speak is about the uh, Industrial Revolution. We have seen, if we look at the history, I'm not going to give a lecture on the history, but they had fantastic impact on our development, starting again with energy, how to make burn coal into vapor and the vapor into dynamic process, movement, and the movement becomes a logistics, a train that will have created huge in industry, push the capitalists forward. Let's forget about the history, but go, come, let's go back only 100 years ago. 100 years ago, something dramatic happened, around 100 years ago. Dramatic happened on this planet, which was the huge developments that happened in physics. Before that, we will all run everything in, on, on the earth and beyond the earth in our imagination was happening according to the classical physics, classical mechanics, which were created by Isaac Newton and many great uh, other scientists. And everything was explainable. But at the end of the 19th century, beginning of 20th century, new events happening, happened, new scientific discoveries that could not be explained by classical physics. So as a result of that, geniuses like Albert Einstein were the people that created the theory of relativity and the physics of the big mass, the universe, the theory of gravity, the special and general theories of relativity. And then there were great scientists that created the physics of the micro, the quantum physics. People like Paul Dirac, Heisenberg and others. I want to pay that you should pay attention to something very important. It's not only the fact that we discovered a new physics, which is the physics of the big and physics of the small, and the physics of quantum. There's something happened that people didn't really re realize that was happening. It was the revolution of thinking, the revolution of logic. I'm emphasizing this because I will use that to show you that it's very important Matter. Because at the end of the day, when you speak about classical yes. mechanics, you are speaking uh, a body moving from point A to point B, and it has to go through a specific path. That's our logic, the way I, we see it. But when you go to the quantum behavior of, of a small particle, I think you lose that. The logic is completely different. There is no path. If you try to fix a particle, you will lose uh, where it should go. If you try to fix the velocity, you will lose the particle where the particle is, and that's natural. So what you can talk about is the, not the place of the particle, not the path, but probability of this particle with this velocity and with this coordinate be here and with that sort of a velocity. It's a completely different logic of reality, okay? That's very important. So these geniuses have looked at the reality and have changed, revolutionized, the whole logic of thinking, looking at the thing. Because initially scientists were, were frightened because everything was illogical. The moment you change your logic, your approach, you start understanding and everything becomes logical with the new ideas. That's a very important issue in the revolution of, of science. Now the second point I want to make on, on revolution, uh, industrial revolution, is that Today, what we are seeing is not the fourth industrial revolution. I would describe it differently. Because based on what we have today, and that base uh, is 
the basis of it, which is the natural sciences, the achievements of physics, mathematics, chemistry, that was achieved during the 20th century and during the Cold War. But, and some synergies initially between different sciences, biology, physics, chemistry, space, communication. But now what we have, we have acceleration. And the core of that acceleration is artificial intelligence. Why? Because at the end of the day, any research, any result is about data and how do you manage the data. And look what we are facing today. What we are facing, we have the technology of scanning human body from top to bottom. We will get huge amount of data. There is no doctor that can manage that data. But if we use artificial intelligence, I mean super, super computing systems that can analyze and teach themselves as well, that system can in seconds analyze the whole that data and give a doctor's advice to you. Artificial intelligence will help us to understand deeper our DNA and to transform that. So we will live longer, healthier, we will cure diseases like cancer, and the achievements that we have is there. Last year, the Nobel Prize in medicine were two gentlemen that basically found us the solution to some of the types of cancer. But this is a result of several years of hard work. Several years of hard work. And the usage of artificial intelligence that helps to understand that if you increase the immune system of the body dramatically, not once or twice, because we were afraid of doing that, but 10, 100 times, then the cancer cells will be visible and you can cure the cancer. So artificial e intelligence becomes the brain of the industrial revolution. So I want to make a point here, very important one, that there is no fourth industrial revolution. What we are facing today in this world and what you, the younger generation, will be facing tomorrow is permanent revolution that will be happening every day. Maybe not physically every day, but the changes in your life will be. So as I said, the basis of that is the huge knowledge in science, technology, but the locomotive is artificial intelligence. So those countries or those companies who are investing in artificial intelligence are on the right path. Because artificial intelligence, together with, with knowledge that we have, is going to change dramatically this world. It's also going to change the way we handle our problems. The food, the water, the energy. It's going to change the landscape at the end of the day of, uh, of jobs. Because as I described you, the, the, job, the job of the doctor will be much different because the artificial intelligence will advise the doctor. The work of a lawyer will be completely different because the artificial intelligence will advise, analyze, and help you to do that. There will be a lot of jobs that will disappear, but there will be new jobs that will be appearing, new ones. And I think the core of that activity, human activity, will become innovation. We see that today. We are living in a century of not big industrial companies. We are living in a century where young innovation startups are ruling the world. Look at the biggest companies on the world. Are the big oil companies? No. Are the ones that started in a garage by young innovative people and created multi-billion companies and they are running the world. And the next, next uh, uh, generations, our problems, as I said, the multiple problems will find a solution. And the solution, of course, will be connected with the uh, new wave of industrial revolution. I call it R evolution. R with a capital letter, hyphen, evolution with big E. So it's an old evolution, but rapid evolution with exponential growth. So we will be facing revolution every day. That's a fascinating world that you are going to, to live, younger generation people. A world that your skills, your talent, innovative power will be recognized.
Now let me take another small uh, look at what is going to happen socially and politically. This revolution and globalization is going to touch our normal life as well. You are seeing that everywhere. The events that are happening in this world that looks a little bit unpredictable, a little bit unorganized, at the end of the day, they are the result of our evolution and the new quantum world that we are living in. Events that happened in France, election of some uh, President Macron that came somehow with the movement and created a youth new movement and, and won the elections. Events in Britain, where the emotions and public relations and the Facebook has created the movement for uh, Brexit. President Trump is a great example of the 21st century, how you run the politics, bypassing the CNNs of the world and the magazine and saying, addressing directly to the people, to the voter. My own country, approximately a year ago, when I was uh, inaugurated as a president, a couple of weeks after that, what happened? A small demonstration led by a young journalist that started in, in the north of the country, with a couple of people, then 10 of them, then hundreds, then thousands, maybe 5,000, 10,000. Eventually we ended up with 200,000 people on the square. And in two weeks we had a revolution in Armenia. All run because the world is globalized, because we are interconnected, because everybody has a Facebook, and you don't need a political party to make a, a, a big change in your own country, and global is one. So welcome to the new global world that we are going to live. Welcome to the new world of quantum behavior. Quantum in the sense that classical methods and the ways of running business, of developing your ideas, even running politics, are no longer well going to be effective. You have to be very, very innovative. Now, to the young people, two words, advice. Minister made a very encouraging statement here about the policies of the government. And I would like to, to congratulate the government because it's young by spirit and it's young by its action. For me, uh, being young is not about the years that you have lived on this planet, but are you young by your spirit? Do you have enough energy? Are you interested in what is happening? Now, advice to younger people what, what to do in the future. If I was giving advice to my grandchild, child, whose name is also Armin, I would say, uh, Dear Armin, I'm not going to advise you to, to be a doctor, or to be a lawyer, or to be a farmer. Because maybe in 30 years' time, I think there'll be very little, they're very few number of doctors, very few number of lawyers. What I will advise you, first of all, look inside yourself. Find who you are. Because every child born has a talent. One has a talent of mathematics, the other one music, the other one a craftsman. Third one is a story a storyteller, fourth one as a politician. The fifth one has a talent of listening. And that's a fantastic quality to help other people when you listen about their problems and maybe you can give an advice. Every child has a talent. So the idea is not what to become. The idea is to discover who you are. That's the first advice to you. The second thing I will advise small Armin is, dear Armin, find a mission in your life. If you have a talent in music, you have to have a mission to become the best violin player. Or you have a talent to be politician, you have to have a, have a mission in politics. Or you have engineer, you want to become the best guy to create something very useful. Find a mission in your life, not a job, but a mission that is happening, that you are passionate. That is a part of you. And these two have to be in harmony. Because if I have a passion of music, but I don't have the talent, then I'll have a small conflict for years and years. So I have to find the talent and the passion or the mission. The third thing, think about your life in a 21st century way. 
think about your life, life as, as a startup. So you have to create your own startup, which is called Startup Army, small army. So it's like an application, you push on it. What is that you want the startup has to do? So create yourself as a professional, as someone that has the ability of creating. And of course, don't forget that it is hard work, that you have to work very hard. Don't forget there are historic values, values of your nation, of your family. And don't forget that you, in order to achieve something, you have to stay young all your life. Remember that being young is not about the years that you lived on this planet. It's just a matter of your soul. If you learn something new every day, like a child learns something new every day, then you are young. If you are 18 years old and you are learning something, you are excited with the world, you are making plans for the future, then you are young. And of course, in your life, you will have difficulties. So, I think you have to be brave enough. Every new day after the huge success is a new day you have to again and again and again prove that you are worth it, what you have achieved. Every new day after the failure, after disappointment, it's not a day for, the, for depression. Just stand up, walk again. You have a wonderful life ahead of you. And this new world, which is a quantum world, don't worry about that. Don't be afraid. Like the new the, the scientists 100 years ago, they were facing huge drama, tragedy. They couldn't understand how this universe was running. They changed their approach. They changed their logic. They became the new innovators. They started thinking quantumly about the world of physics. They achieved the understood and everything became harmonized and clear how the universe works. Look at the, your life at the 21st century, at industry, business, politics, from the point of view of innovator. Rediscover this world. The logic will be different. This world, 21st century, is a quantum world. It's not the classical world of the 20th. But if you understand how it works, you will be in harmony and you will be successful. So good luck. And good luck to all of you. I'm wishing you, you are, somehow I'm jealous. I would love to be <laughs> 15, 20 year old like you. Because the life ahead will have a lot of challenges. The food, the water, the energy, the climate. But the solutions are there. And the solutions are here and here. Good luck.